Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our Archbishop and Father Savas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, and all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our country, the President, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our God, save your people. Lord of my soul and everything within me, bless his holy name. Peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves in one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For yours is the dominion, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I shall praise the Lord while I live. I shall sing to my God as long as I exist. Save us, O oh Son of God, who rose from the dead. Save us who sing to you, hallelujah. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. His hope is in the Lord, he is God. So, so, hallelujah. The Lord 
shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Say, O Son of God, who rose from the dead, save us who sing to you, Alleluia. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. O mono yenisios que logos tu peu, atoratos y parbon, que trata de sabenos y a ti ni meteran sotirían, salvo ti. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Master and Lord our God, you've established in heaven the orders and hosts of angels and archangels to minister to your glory. Grant that the holy angels may enter with us, that together we may serve and glorify your goodness. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. to proclaim that you have risen from the dead, Christ our God, granting the world great mercy. Christoti taig dich nach dies, der ich von den Bassi, agatins in Ivisi, ihr ihr oprepos, and the summoners in the glissas, I to scavus tis eclogis ta porita, get in pist in tetiricas, toris on dromon tetelecas, 
Apostole Timote, prezve ve Hristo to Theo, sotinetas psychas Timon. Your martyr, O Lord, was worthily awarded by you, the crown of incorruption in that he contested for you, our immortal God. Since he possessed your power, he defeated the tyrants, dashing the demons' powerless displays of defiance. O Christ, God had his fervent entreaties, save our souls. Together, please, the hymn of our church. It is on page two of your bulletin. Blessed are you. Sanctified a virgin's woman, properly bless the hands of Simeon. Having now come and saved us, O Christ our God, give peace to your commonwealth in troubled times and strengthen those in authority whom you love as, as only the loving one. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory. To the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy God, you dwell among your saints, you are praised by the seraphim of the Christ holy name, and glorified by the cherubim, worship by the heavenly powers. You brought all things out of nothing in being your creator. Sanctify our souls and bodies. Grant that we worship and serve you in holiness all the days of our lives by the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and the Virgin Mary and all the saints who believe in the world of the ages.
Let us be attentive. Bring to the Lord, O you sons of God, bring to the Lord glory and honor. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's first letter to Timothy. Let us be attentive. Timothy, my son, the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and suffer reproach, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct in love, in faith, in purity. Till I come, attend to the public reading of scripture, to preaching, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophetic utterance when the council of elders laid their hands upon you. Practice these duties, devote yourself to them, so that all may see your progress. Peace be to you, the reader. Arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Let us be attentive. At that time, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief collector and rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not on account of the crowd, because he was small of stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, he has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Good morning. All of our church school students, please up to the front here. Thank you.
Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I am so happy to see you all here today. Thank you, and thank you to your parents for getting you here on time. And uh, Father Otto and I just love our time with you here in the liturgy. A question, how many people <clears throat> live in your house? How many people? How many? Four. Four. How many? Five. Five? Four. Four? Four. Well, yeah, because you live in his house, so that's the same. <laughs> Anybody have different than four or five? Five. Five? You have five, too. Okay, so who are they? Who lives in your house? Can anybody name them? My mom, my dad, and my brother, and my sister. All right, plus you. That's five. Oh, yeah. Okay, how about you? My mom, my dad, my brother, and me. Okay, that's four. Very good. All right, so if somebody just walked into your house, they didn't know anything about you or anything about your family, how would they know that these people are living there? What are the signs that somebody is living in your house? Hmm? What's the sign that somebody's living in your house? Maybe they have a room in your house? They have a room in your house. How do you know that they have a room? How do you know that this room belongs to so-and-so and this one? It's covered with our mess. <laughs> that would be the kids' rooms, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, what else? What, how else would you know? How else would you know that somebody else, these are the people living in your house? Andrew, how would they know? Um, missing things. Missing? <laughs> there would be, what else? What else? Yeah, tell me. Uh, pictures? Pictures, that's a good idea. So would they find maybe in the family room or somewhere else, maybe in your parents' room on the dresser, like pictures of the kids and all that? Yes. Uh, bangles things. The which? Bangles things. Okay, that's a little bit out, out of line. Okay, I'm just telling you, bangles are just, you said, you didn't say bagels, you said bangles, right? Yeah, bangles. Bangles would be okay, bangles ba not here. Oh. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can cheer forever you want to. All right. Uh, but bagels, maybe. Somebody likes bagels, too. All right. So uh, when people, when you were in your house, how do you interact with each other? You're just like there. Everybody goes to the room, and nobody, nobody sees each other. What happens on a daily basis? How do you interact with each other in your house? We'll eat together. You eat meals together. What else do you do together? Sit down on the couch together. All right, you sit down, that's nice. That's kind of fun, isn't it? Yes, I'm... Yes. <laughs> Watch the Bengals games together. <laughs> <laughs> Fool me once, right? That's it. I'll check on you next week. All right. <laughs> so... And you talk, don't you? You talk with each other. You spend time, sometimes you play games and all that. All right, what about company? If somebody comes into your house, what are the kind of things that you'll do if, somebody, if you have a visitor? <laughs> you would talk to them. You'd talk to them. What else would you do? You greet them. Yeah, you greet them. Maybe give them a hug, right? What else do you do when somebody comes to your house with them? What do you do you with them? You can play with them. You can play with them, that's right. You can feed them. You can do all sorts of fun stuff, right? Okay, so, if you have company coming, what do mom and dad tell you to do? What do they tell you to do, right? Come on, Andrew, if company is coming, mom and dad say, Andrew, go and... Clean. Clean your room, that's exactly right. And, and, if, and once you get the house ready, like, how long does company stay sometimes? How, how long, like, on the average, maybe, what, how long does somebody stay? Maybe an hour or two. Okay, so if they're just coming to visit for a little bit, an hour or two, sometimes maybe it's family coming from afar, how long would they stay? A couple hours or days. A couple hours or a couple days. Does anybody have people that stay longer than that? Does have, anybody have company, somebody that comes and stays at your house for like a week? Has anybody ever done that? How about a month? How about like the whole summer? Has anybody ever come and stayed for the whole summer? No. No? Has, has anybody ever come and stayed for good? Like, hi, I'm here. I'm just, nice to be here. I'm staying. I'm not leaving, all right? So, so, now we've covered you. You live in your house. We've covered your family. Your family lives in your house. There's all sorts of signs of that. We've covered visitors coming to your house, sometimes for a little bit, sometimes for a long time. 
Here's the question for today on the Sunday of Zacchaeus. Does God live in your house? Everybody's shaking their head yes, which is exactly what I thought you were going to do. Now let's go back and look at it the way we looked at the other people living in your house. Does God have, is there any sign at all? Okay, here I am. I'm a stranger, and I come into your house. Well, maybe I'm someone you invited. Strangers don't usually walk in. So I walk into your house, and I look around. I see, oh, there's mom and dad's bedroom. Oh, here's Demi's bedroom. Oh, look, there's pictures of the whole family here. All of that kind of, here's Andrew's mess over here. You know, right? So I know all these people. How do I know that God lives in your house? What do I see? What do I, what happens that tells me that God lives in this house? Is there any sign at all? What? Icons. There might be icons. I like, where would the, where could possibly icons be in your house? Where might they be? Above the doors. You could have, sometimes they put it above the door. Yeah, it's a cool thing in the entrance. What else? Above the fireplace. That's a nice place to put it, above the fireplace. Where else? In the kitchen. I love that. Who do they put in the kitchen? St. Afrosinos, the cook, right? He's the patron saint of kitchens. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, where? In your bedroom. In your bedroom, that's right. Uh, sometimes they put one in the dining room, right? What's the one that people like to put in the dining room? When the Lord's eating. The... Go ahead. Yep, you can use it. Last Supper. You can take credit for that one. The Last Supper, that's right. Honestly, other than maybe your bathroom, there's probably nowhere that you can't put an icon in your house. And when someone walks in and they look and they see, ah, well, it's not only the family, but God lives in this house. Now, another question. I said, when somebody comes to your house, or for that matter, when you're with your family on a day-to-day -day basis, what do you do with them? You talk to them, you spend time with them, so what do you do with God in your house? If you know that God's in your house, do you walk around all day ignoring him? So how do you pay attention to God in your house? How do you interact with God in your house? Hmm? What do you do with God? It's you and God. There, everybody's gone for the day, and it's just you in the house. But you know that God lives there always, so it's you and God. So what are you doing with God? You can pray. You certainly can pray. That's one of the things that we should do as Christians all the time. What else can you do with God? Can you talk to God? Pray. Yes, you so, can talk to God. Yeah, so you can talk to God. That's right. What else? What else? Let's say somebody comes to your house who's a great storyteller. I was with somebody yesterday. I, a person who I love listening to his stories. He's just a phenomenal storyteller. Um... What do you do when somebody's really great at telling stories? You're the other person. What do you do? Listen. You listen. That's right. So you can pray to God. You can talk with God. You can listen to God. You can do that all in your own home. So today, we heard the story of Zacchaeus. And Jesus was going through the village, and he saw Zacchaeus up in the sycamore tree. By the way... We went to the Holy Land, and we saw where that sycamore tree was. I see our pilgrims shaking their head yes and smiling, because we walked right by that place, right? Anyway, and Z Jesus says to Zacchaeus, go home, and I'm going to go with you, and we're going to stay in your house today. How about that? Guess what? Every day, every day, God says, I'm coming to your house today. And he comes to your house by invitation because you invite him into your house. But he also comes into the house of your soul. He comes into your heart because you invite him there too. And whether it's in your house or whether it's in you, God lives there and wants to make his home there. And he doesn't like to be ignored, just like nobody else likes to be ignored. He also likes to have evidence that he was there. Right? So, the icons, some other evidence could be a Bible, right? Some other evidence could be some really good books about things in spiritual life, the church, prayer books, all sorts of things like that. And uh, we also want to interact with him and talk with him and pray to him and especially listen to him. And then we're like Zacchaeus. 
who open the doors of our house, and there is Jesus. And he is with you all the time. So, finishing up today, where else is God's house besides living with you? Where? Stephanie? God lives in heaven, exactly. But here on earth, where do we, what do we call God's house? What do we call God's house here on earth? <laughs> You'll find a way to work the Bengals into that one. I'm sorry. Yes. The Holy Land. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. The Holy Land. The Holy Land on, on, yes, that is a very special place. But where else? Where, where, where else? All right, go ahead. Church. There, yes, very good. You've redeemed yourself today, Oliver. Good job. So, church. And guess what we are doing to God's house? Just like your parents decorate and paint and, and, and make your house beautiful, guess what's happening starting tomorrow? Anybody know? Iconographers. By the end of the Divine Liturgy, they'll be getting on a plane, and they'll be coming here and arriving tonight, and tomorrow morning, they come, you see the scaffolding already, and they are going to make this place so beautiful. And you are going to see that according to the traditions of our church, we are going to make God's house so evident that God lives here that when somebody walks in, they will look and say, just like they do sort of already, wow, if this place is so beautiful, heaven must be a thousand times more, and I want to live the life loving God so that I can be with him not only here in his church on earth, but I can live with him forever in heaven. And so that's why we glorify and beautify, we beautify the house of God and glorify him by doing so as a sign of love for him, and that we count this place as so special, we want to make it the most beautiful place that we have. So it's gonna be an exciting couple of months. They're gonna be here for a, a little over two months, and uh, you get to watch it every time you come here. So God bless you all. Go home. When you walk in your house today, you know what I want you to say? I want you to say to yourself, to your sisters, your brothers, your parents, God lives here. Can you do that? All right, God lives here. God bless you. Please rise. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord no one down by will who desires and pleasures is worthy to approach, draw near, minister to the King of glory, to serve you as great and awesome, even for the heavenly powers. brought our things out of nothingness to be. To serve you as great and awesome, even for the heavenly powers, but because of your ineffable and immeasurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as our high priest, Lord of all, with us a celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. For you alone, Lord our God, who over all things in heaven and earth, you are seated on the throne of the chairman, Lord of the Seraph, and the King of Israel. You are alone, a holy and dwell among your saints. You are alone, and good and ready together from before you look upon me, your sinful and worthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit, the best of the grace of Christ, that I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. Do I come with bowed head and pray? Do not turn your face away from me. Represent the chair and sing the thrice holy hymn for the life of every Trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life as we receive the King of all the Holy Spirit of Angelica, Son of Maria, Alleluia, Alleluia. We who mystically represent the chair and sing the thrice holy hymn for the life of every Trinity, let us lay aside all the cares of this life that we receive the King of all his blessed God, Angelica, Son of Maria. 
Καλλιέρο Βήμη, Ιστικό Οικονίζον, Δεσκετή Ζωπιό Τριάδου, Ιτων Τρισάβιου, Νίμιν Προστάδων, Εσπάσιν την Διώτικη να πω το μετανέρημα. Ω τον Βασιλέα, τον Όλο Υποδεξάμιν τη Αγγελικά, ο Ράφο του Ρήφορου Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God, we are none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. Joy has come to all the world. Blessed Lord, let us praise his resurrection for enduring the cross for us. He has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy. According to the multitude of ten mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins are before you. Against you, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against you. I have sinned against you. You shall purge me this much. You shall wash me. I shall be whiter than snow. You shall make me hear sounds of joy and gladness at the moment of your birth. Please turn your face away from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and no right spirit. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from your restore me from your preservation. Dear Lady, you are my God, you are my God, you are my God, you are my to the holy places. And bless the Lord always, my Lord, for into the ages. Βασιλεία αυτού πάντοτε νυν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Αμήν. Μαι δελό. His kingdom, always, now, and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Lord, I gotta remember your priesthood in this
Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, for the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Grant For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Grant Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and the ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence, that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, and that your good and gracious spirit may abide with us, with the gifts here presented, and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all. As I just finished speaking to the children about God living in their house and this being God's house and he lives here, let us affirm that with one another, that Christ indeed is in our midst today. Greet one another with the kiss of peace, the greeting Christ is in our midst, and the response, he is and always shall be. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. I love you, Lord, my strength, Lord, is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. the doors in wisdom let us be attentive I believe in one God Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible and one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God begotten of the Father before all ages light of light true God of true God begotten not created of one essence with the Father through whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, and together, together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the ages to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. For you are God ineffable beyond comprehension, invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing. And when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit for all things we know and do not know, for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings. Singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out and saying. Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us on the night when he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broken, gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sin." Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second and glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Da saec ton son si prospero men cata panda, via panda. Please bow your heads to the end of the next hymn. Once again, we offer you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. We ask, pray, and entreat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me, O Theos, lastimita matalokele. So may God be merciful to me, a sinner and save me. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So that they may be to those who partake of them for vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of your Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you not in judgment or condemnation. And we offer you the spiritual worship for those who are opposed to the faith, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs,
patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and travelers who spirit me. Especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Anastasios the Martyr, the Virgin Mary, 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 the Virgin you this holy and spiritual worship for the whole world, for the holy Catholic and apostolic church and those living in purity and holiness. And for those in public service, permit them, O Lord, to serve and govern in peace, that through the faithful conduct of their duties, we may live peaceful and serene lives in all piety and holiness. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Savas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our loving God, who has received them at his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar, is an offering of spiritual fragrance. May return, send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope. We ask, pray, and entreat. Make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries. From this holy and spiritual table, with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pater imon, o entis uranis, aias dito to nomasu, el teto i basiliasu, yenithito to telimasu, O Senura noque epidisis, donatum imontum ipiusion, 
Δώσε μην σήμερα, και άφησε μην τα οφειλήματα ημών, ω και εμεί σαφεί με του πελάτε ημών. Και μη ει ενέγγε μα ει πειρασμών, αλλά είσαι ημά από του πονηρού. Ότι σου έστεινε η βασιλεία και η δύναμη και η δόξα του πατρό και του ιού και του αγίου πνεύματο νυν και αή και στου αιώνα των αιώνων. Ειρήνη πάση. Τα σκεφαλά σημών το κυρίω κλείνω με. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you have created all things. By your great mercy you brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down upon, from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick, physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy good and life-creating Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, God, hear us from your holy dwelling place in the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father, and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us. Let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save us. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save us. Let us be attentive, the holy gifts for the holy people of God. Da Agia di Sahis. When God has broken his I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal, amen. How shall I, whom unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I should be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness. But for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body, in the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas. But as a thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our immortal King and God.
Christ, forgive me, a sinner. Behold, I approach Christ, our Lord, the King and God. To me, John, the unworthy priest, has given the most precious holy body of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please forgive me, the unworthy priest and sinner. to O God, glory to O God, glory to O God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only Son this world. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God, we know none other than you. We call upon your holy name, come all your faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. We hold to the cross, joy has come, and all the world and bless you, Lord, let us praise his resurrection. During the cross, he has crucified death. Good morning. We welcome all of you who have come this morning to worship the Lord together and be part of the faith, family, and community of Holy Trinity Church. At this time, we will be calling forth for Holy Communion. We remind you that during the church school year, this chalice on, the right, on this side, we ask first, please, the church school staff to come forward so that they may receive first and go to their classes to arrive before their students. The parish council will dismiss everybody else to the center aisle. The first pass will be for the church school students only, so that they may get to their classes and have a maximum class time. And then the second pass that will come around is through the center aisle, and everybody else who is an Orthodox Christian who has prepared properly to receive the holy mysteries may come forward. Thank you. May God have mercy on us. With the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near.
forgiveness of sins and your life deserve the of God.
forgiveness of sins which you might serve God. So he receives the body of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. God Eleni receives the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Matalambani, Iduni Tita Amalita, Soma Kamu Suis, Absu Matyon Kezuin, Eoni, on the Savior of God, Andrew receives the Samuel, receives the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. The servant of God, what he needs is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. The servant of God, Nicholas, receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. The servant of Sebastian receives the body of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, the servant of God honor receives the body of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, the servant of God and the receives the body of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, the servant of God Maria receives the body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, the servant of God Basilios receives the body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, the servant of God Christianus receives the body and blood of the Lord. Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, the servant of God, Stephen receives the body and blood of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, God Andreas receives the body and blood of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, the servant of God Andrew receives the body and blood of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, the servant of God Kriya Pulo receives the body and blood of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, the servant of God Christopher receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Michael receives the body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Either one of you? Servant of God Emmanuel receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen. Servant of God Luke receives the body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen. Save your people and bless your inheritance. We our Lord by your holy blood, the sins of us and the intercessions of the Lord the Virgin Mary and all the saints. Worshiping the undivided Trinity, the Trinity, who has said, 
exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, may your glory be above all the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly life, giving an awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that on this day you've made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path. Establish us firmly in your fear. Guard our lives and make our endeavors safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Father, give the blessing. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service to the armed forces and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Praise our God, you are the Father, and the Prophet, you have the disposition of the Father. To have to join by this voice, now and ever, Please join us as we offer memorial prayers today for a number of individuals. It's 40 days for Steve or Stilianos Morris, eight years for Rita Caligiris, 38 years for James Caligiris, 23 years for Julia, Julie Caligiris, and also eight years for our nephew, uh, John Peter Yakovos Orphanakos. <laughs> Η τόση κύριε διδαξόν με τα δικαιώματά σου των Αγίων ο χώρος αύρε πηγή της ζωής και θύραν παραδείσου εύρω καγώ την οδόν διά της μετανοίας το πολλονός πρόβα τον εγώ ημί Ανακάλεσε με σωτήρκες και σώσον με. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes of old. You created me from nothing and honored me with your divine image. When I disobeyed your commandment, O Lord, you cast me down to the earth from where I was taken. Lead me back again to your likeness and renew my original beauty. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. I am an image of your ineffable glory, though I bear the scars of my transgressions. On your creation, Master, take pity and cleanse me by your compassion. <coughs> Grant me the homeland for which I long, and once again make me a citizen of paradise. <laughs> Anapapson, O Theos, to Zulusu, Kakataxon, after Saint Paradiso, O Pukori, Tonagi, on Tiri, and 
Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the threefold radiance <coughs> of the one God. Let us praise and shout in song. Holy are you, eternal Father, co-eternal Son and divine Spirit. Illumine us who worship you in faith and deliver us from the eternal fire. Now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Rejoice, gracious lady, who for the salvation of all gave birth to God in the flesh and through whom the human race has found salvation. Through you, pure and blessed Theotokos, may we find paradise. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Loxa Sio Theo. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Among the saints, O Christ, give rest to the souls of your servants where there is no pain, no sorrow, no sign but only life everlasting. In your peace, O Lord, where all your saints repose, give rest also to the souls of your servants, for you alone are immortal. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are our God, who descended into Hades, and loosened the pains of those who were chained. Grant rest also, O Savior, to the souls of your servants. <laughs> Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your great love. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the departed servants of God, John Peter, Yakovos, Stelianos, Areti, Dimitrios, Cassiani, and who have fallen asleep for the forgiveness of all their sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May the Lord God place their souls where the righteous repose. Let us ask for the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of their sins from Christ our immortal King and God. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> o God of spirits and of all flesh who have trampled upon death and abolished the power of the devil, giving life to your world, give rest to the souls of your servants, Stylianos, <clears throat> Areti, Dimitrios, Cassiani, and John Peter Yakovos, who have fallen asleep in a place of light, a place of repose, a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, sorrow, or suffering. As a good and loving God, forgive every sin they have committed in thought, word, or deed. 
For there is no one who lives and does not sin. You alone are without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And your word is truth. For you are the res Otisian Astasis, Izuik and Apophis, Don Kekimen on Dulunsu, Stilianu, Areti, Dimitriu, Scassianis, Ke, Ioano Panayotis, Yakovu, Christeo, Theosimon, Cassitin Docs and an Apemblemen, Sindona, Crusupatri, Keto Panayo, Kagatok, Zopios of Nevmatin, in Keaikis to Seonas, Toneon. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servants, Christ our God, and to you we give glory. With your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life giving Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. May our memory be eternal, dear brothers and sisters, you who are worthy of eternal blessedness and eternal memory. <coughs> Together, please. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Around this time of the year, there are quite a few athletic events. I actually feel it's a little bit saturated. Just recently, the World Cup finished. And unlike the World Series, they actually, the world had access to it. And, uh, that's when the best football teams around the world gathered together and they uh, competed. And then there's our football. It is the playoffs right now. Not that we would know much about that here. Our poor Steelers, unfortunately, are not in it. Apparently, the Bengals are in it. Did you hear that this morning? <laughs> Certainly not the Packers. We cannot have it all. There are also many indoor sports going on. Most notably, Goya is playing basketball, and uh, many of us are either playing, getting ready for sporting events, or as fans, our hearts are into these sports. So how about today we look at the way in which St. Paul used athletic events to teach us to be better Christians. What can we learn from these sporting events? And we shall see that we too are called to be athletes for Christ. And an athlete for Christ is someone who has self-discipline and a very clear purpose. So, in this world today, we often use catchphrases that have to do with uh, sports. No pain, no gain. I'm sure all of us have used that. Give it your best shot, right? He who aims at nothing hits it every time. That's one of those archery. Uh, don't throw in the towel. Right? We use expressions like this. You hit it out of the ballpark. And all these sports metaphor, metaphors are meant to teach us to put efforts into our successes and to persevere. Similarly, in his own time, St. Paul compared the Christian life to athletic events in his time. For example, he wrote, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Please do not imagine St. Paul going to actually fight with people physically, but he is using a sports metaphor. Wrestling was very, very popular in those times to say that he himself was engaged in a spiritual battle and he played by the rules 
and it was for a noble purpose, the good fight. He fought the good fight. And he says, I have finished the race. As somebody who ran a few races in his own lifetime, I can tell you that one of the most dreadful thing for runners is the DNF, did not finish. <laughs> Doesn't matter how bad the time is, DNF does not stand well with us. So I have finished the race, says St. Paul here. I have kept the faith. So you see his perseverance on his way to victory. And very often when we read from St. Paul, we hear expression about fighting the fight, to run with patience, he says, and then he invites us to wrestle not with flesh and blood. That's what he says, wrestle not with flesh and blood. In other words, it is a spiritual metaphor, it's a spiritual image. One very interesting thing that one notices when reading uh, these metaphors from St. Paul is that he never mentions team sports. I've been thinking about this. I'm not sure I know about too many team sports in antiquity. I'm sure maybe rowing or whatever, but he never mentions team sports. And an athlete in one of my classes pointed this out. He plays soccer and he says, this is very interesting to him because it shows that there is no such thing as hiding behind the winners. You understand? There's no such thing as being the weak link and yet your team wins. When St. Paul is writing, he assumes that each person is engaged in their own event by themselves, and so they have to put the effort without counting on the others to hide between, behind them. Of course, this is not to say that it doesn't matter that we are members of the body of Christ. For St. Paul, this imagery is very, very important. And so I would like to remind you from his own times that those who competing in the Olympic Games or the Pan-Hellenic Games, they had to be citizens of the kingdom in order to represent the kingdom for which they were fighting. Which one is our kingdom? It's clearly the kingdom of heaven. And so when we fight our spiritual battles, we do this as representatives of the kingdom of God. When people look at us, how we fight the good fight, they are supposed to know for which team we play. The deeds that we are doing, the way we fight with our passions, the way we strive to attain virtues has to be an indication about the kingdom of God that we represent. That is our true home. And yet, crowns were given there on the merit of the individual. In the Christian race to which we are called to run, God is not handing out the victor's crowns to the entire body. Those who would win this crown must do it by being faithful to their own course. St. Paul mentions quite often the crowns. In fact, in the hymn that we read today for St. Timothy, there is mention about a crown after he ran the good race uh, in his hymn. This idea of crowns, we have kept in the Orthodox Church. When we represent saints in our icons, as you can see everywhere where we have Orthodox icons, they have a halo, which is really a crown that they have in the kingdom of heaven. It's a sign of their victory. It's a sign that they have been crowned by the ultimate judge, Jesus Christ, as saints. There's another time when you see crowns in the Orthodox Church. Do you remember? At weddings. At weddings, the husband and the wife wear crowns. And in the Greek tradition, those crowns are also tied to each other with a ribbon. Yes, you each fight individually, but you're supposed to help the other person gain their crown in the kingdom of heaven. So there are these sports metaphors. Let me mention another one from St. Paul. Um, he uses the image of runners in Greek games as an example of how we're supposed to live as Christians. And he must have seen a race 
looked at it and be very, very impressed with the way those people ran. But then he looked back and he says, everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. St. Paul looks at the way an athlete trains for a race. And if the race is just a few minutes, it doesn't mean that that's all the preparation they're putting in the event. In fact, they have to watch their diet, they have to watch their sleep, they have to watch their mental health. And St. Paul sees all of that, and he says, if athletes are doing this for a perishable crown, how much more should we have this type of self-temperance, self-control for the unperishable crown that we receive in heaven? In other words, if for a little race somebody watches what they eat, we should be fasting. If for a little race somebody watches their mental state, we should be at peace with everybody. We should be praying. If somebody watches their schedule in preparation for a race, we should make coming to church a priority. You understand how it would work for St. Paul if he were here uh, in our midst today? These types of very rigorous programs that especially professional athletes uh, employ existed throughout history. There is, for example, uh, a, a story of St. Francis of Assisi being really tempted by passions. And when that happened to him, he would throw his body into a frozen river. And this way, he tempered his passions. And I will bet you that there are at least 10 people among us who have taken an ice bath. I have. <laughs> but I'm looking and I know there are at least 10 people among us who literally filled up a bathtub with cold water and ice and we just threw our bodies in there because it hurt so much and there was no other way. If we do stuff like that in order to win a race, how much more should we see the relationship between our bodies and our souls for the unperishable wreath? I will provide one more image from St. Paul when it comes to athletic events and then two other ones. St. Paul calls the Christian life a high calling. A high calling would be literally an upward call. In other words, we are down here and we receive a call upwards. When did that happen in athletic events? At the end. At the end, whoever watched the athletic event, it could have been the emperor or it could have been a judge, calls the victor upwards. This is the high calling so that they would be crowned. The equivalent today is the podium. Did you notice how on the podium people stand up at different levels of elevation? First place, second place, third place, right? And they actually go up there so that everybody can see them. And who crowns them? The emperor or the judge of that time. But that's an earthly emperor, an earthly judge. St. Paul describes the Christian life as a high calling, as an upward calling, where the judge, Jesus Christ, is calling us to live a good Christian life so that we would be crowned victors at the end of that life. Now let me offer two more images. One of them comes from the service of baptism. I'm sure everybody here has seen a baptism where the priest holds the baby above the uh, uh, fountain, right, above the water, uh, above the baptismal font, and the godparent takes a lot of oil, that's the oil of gladness, right, and rubs oil all over the body of that baby, right? Do you all remember? If not, you have seen my big girl fat wedding. That, that, that's not how it happens with adult <laughs> baptisms, but that's the idea. <laughs> That's the idea, right? So you cover the baby with oil. Why? Because as a way of preparation in antiquity, wrestlers would cover themselves in oil and then the adversary would not be able to grab them and keep hold of them, but they would escape and then win. As Christians, we are athletes for Christ from the beginning 
of our spiritual journey. And the evil one cannot grab hold of us because we have been anointed at our baptism with the grace of God that is protecting us so that no evil force can hold us into place. It's a beautiful image that again comes from athletic games from those times, although also from military strategy. And the last thing I would like to share with you, and please know that it's been more than 10 years that I've been waiting to say this. Really, 10 years and more than 25 pounds ago, I ran a marathon. Do you all remember that, right? Where in the parish we had a fundraiser. It was with another parishioner here. And I've only done it once. There are people here who did it way more times and way better. But here's, here's something that I've been thinking about for the past 10 years. There is a passage in uh, the Bible when Jesus is about to die. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the disciples are falling asleep. Jesus tells them, stay awake. Stay with us. But they fall asleep. And then finally Jesus goes to them with understanding and he says the spirit is willing but the body is weak the spirit is willing but the body is weak in other words why did those disciples finish because the body literally couldn't give anymore now all of you know that when it comes to physical effort for most of us it's actually the reverse. Do you know why we stop? Because here we think to ourselves, that's it, I cannot go anymore. Right? It's the spirit is unwilling. The body is still capable. But most of us are not well trained in our minds. And so we give up with our minds. And that's why we stop exercising. Or we stop running, let's say. In this case, it was running. That is such a powerful thought to know even when you're pushing yourself to the limits and running 26.2 miles is pushing yourself to the minutes, right? I hope you admit that. So, past the limits, right? <laughs> you know, there, that's a long distance. We have several people here who know exactly what they're talking about from their experience. 26.2 miles is a lot. And do you know how often you want to give up? Very often. And do you know how often your body hurts really, really, really badly? And you're saying, I'm done. My body cannot go anymore. But then in your mind, you remember, I'm not an apostle. Jesus, the true judge, said about the apostles that the spirit is willing that the body is weak. They reached their end. Not me. I'm not there yet. And so if you keep going, if you keep wanting it, your body will have the resources to do it. Take this spiritually. First of all, how the apostles are champions of spiritual life, that they were able to push themselves all the way to the actual limits of their bodies and past that, that Jesus recognized, this is it. But also, to understand that oftentimes when we complain that things might be hard, we really have to ask ourselves, have we really reached those limits? Or is it simply that we lost the battle here, even though the body still has resources? So in conclusion, two themes reoccurred today. The first one was self-discipline, and the other one was having a purpose. If as children of God we are going to receive from the judge a victor's crown, we must exercise temperance, self-discipline, and control. When the spirit is willing, the body can go to great lengths, and we are equipped from baptism with the abilities to go to that length. Further, we must understand the nature and the purpose of our course. We cannot run aimlessly. We must passionately run with a purpose to win within the confines of the rules that have been set so that we would be crowned victorious. As in the Olympic Games, so it is in our race. Only citizens can represent the kingdom. And athletes of Christ 
We are citizens of a heavenly country. Let us represent our home well. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, Christ our God, and our hope, glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us. As a good, loving, and merciful God, through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable, bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy, glorious prophet and foreigner, John the Baptist, the holy, glorious apostles, the holy, God-bearing fathers, the holy, victorious martyrs, of the holy, righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, Saint Anastasius, the righteous martyr of Persia, Timothy, the holy apostle of the Seventy, Joseph the Sanctified, whose memories we celebrate this day, our Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, and of all the saints, the Efkondon Aion Pater Unimon Kyria Isu Christeo Theos, Eleison Kesos Onimas. May the Holy Trinity bless and protect you. Good morning. Please be seated. Good morning to all of you. Good to have you here this morning. Our parish council is passing the tray. Thank you for your support of the ministries of Holy Trinity Church. In the event that you do not have cash on you, remember we have the kiosk in the narthex, and you can simply swipe and smile and walk away, and uh, we will take care of the rest for you. So thank you very much. Uh, a number of announcements today. The hospitality hour is being sponsored by the Caligiris, Morris, and Barker families, and we thank them. We welcome all of them in uh, memory of their loved ones. Our Faith and Family Weekdays continues with our Bible study this week, Father Rado with his excellent study of the Old Testament. We invite you all to join in. Today, parents of young people, there are a number of things going on. We ask for your patience and come in and enjoy the hospitality hour because your children will be busy for a little while. So we have a Goya meeting at the end of church school. There's also, it's not just joy, there is a pizza party for the entire church school as a thank you for their enthusiastic participation in collecting food for the needy over Thanksgiving. So please leave your kids in there and uh, we'll let them enjoy themselves today. Also, there is Greek dance practice and our dancers are practicing for the uh, Valentine's, community Valentine's brunch, which is being hosted by Goya with a special theme this year, and that is honoring our roots. All right, there's some serious things I need you to pay attention to today, because we're running out of time. This is one of them. I don't care where you're from. We want to know where it is. So Goya is trying to, I'm going to use the imagery, weave a tapestry to show what makes up Holy Trinity Church. So there are forms in the gallery. If you haven't done it online yet, Sign one of those, sign out, fill out one of those forms. All it is is where you're from. It could be your home village in Greece. It could be where you grew up with here. It could be whatever you claim as your roots. We really want to know because they're going to be putting displays and, and signs and lists up for the, ex, for the Honoring Our Roots Valentine's Brunch. So that's the one thing I am pleased asking you to do today. If you don't think where you came from is important, that's not my problem. But I think everybody should be taking some kind of pride in where you came from. It could be your historic family roots, or it could just be around here somewhere. But please do that. We really want to know that and, and, and give everybody the uh, appropriate honor from, from your historic roots. All right, the second thing, and this is really important, and I am going to say this before they get here, because I really don't want to make this announcement once they get here. Literally, like as we're finishing liturgy today, our iconographers, or have arrived from 
Athens to London, and they are getting on a plane right now, and they will be arriving at Pittsburgh at 8 o'clock tonight. Part of our responsibility to them is to house them, house them, feed them, and give them transportation while they're here. We took care of the first and the third, but the feeding is another story. And, you know, what do you do when you want to express hospitality? This, isn't hospitality one of our pillars of this community? You feed people, right? So we're asking you, please, the sign-ups, if you didn't do it online, there's sign-ups on the wall in the gallery. Please pick a date and either provide one meal. I know you all can do this. One lunch or one dinner. Just bring it prepared. The lunches, it would be good if they're ready and hot and ready to go. But the dinners, they're going to take from here. You bring and deliver at any time during that day to the church. We'll put it in the cooler, and they'll take it. They're staying at, a, at an Airbnb home, and they'll take it and have it later on that evening. It's just a dinner for five people or a lunch for five people. I know everybody can do that. If you don't do that, basically, we've got to now add into our budget the cost of either taking these people out or figuring out some way to provide for their meals. They're, look what they're doing for us. Can we not provide just a meal? The other one I will mention is Sundays. What, what's a wonderful thing you do on Sundays? You have a family meal, right? Well, guess what? If this doesn't make them part of our Holy Trinity family, making this place so beautiful, I don't know what does. So there are a number of Sundays between now and March 26th when they leave. Sign up for a Sunday and bring them to your home and make them feel like they're at their own home. These men and women are, it's uh, George, Canelos, Maria, Alciviadis, and Polychronis. They're leaving their homes for over two months to come and live here and finish our icons. Can we open our doors and say, come on in and have a nice family meal with us? I, I'm sorry for pushing this so hard, but honestly, one of the things that Holy Trinity Church is known for is its hospitality. So it's been a little painful for me to see how slow those signups have been. I mean, you saw the numbers in there. We've only signed up uh, 27 meals, and we still have about 90 some to go, 95 to go. So can we please do that together? Can we, can we take care of them? I really, really appreciate it. Um, that is the, that's all I'm gonna beat you up with today. So I really appreciate it. It's good to have you all here. Welcome to our, well, I'm gonna say sort of guests. Uh, Costa, where are you? Costa? So, I'm going to not welcome you. I'm going to welcome you and your family back. Stand up if you could, please. All the whole family. There you go. So, I saw this name coming across. Thank you. I saw this name coming across, and Costa Hadzipanagis, and uh, Panikos, Athena, and Ilya. So, I knew that name from a long time ago. You used to come to us down on the north side, right? Moved away, and have now come back. Costa is now in the, uh, in the Pittsburgh area again, and we welcome you and your family back again. It's good to have you here. We've come a long way from the north side, haven't we? That's exactly right. Good, good to have you back. Thank you very much. Please welcome them. You see the yellow crosses. You know what happens when you see someone with the yellow cross. You can't, you can't walk by them without saying hello and welcome to Holy Trinity Church. So God bless you all. Thank you very much. Um, other than that, I believe that's all the announcements for today. Um, please come and stay for hospitality hour at the, at, the, uh, at the invitation of the families who are sponsoring it for Memorial today. And God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. Take a good look. This is the last time you're going to see some of these white walls. They're starting here, here, and here. And then they're going to just kind of move throughout the entire church. This scaffolding, you're going to think somebody's here playing with Legos because every week when you come in, probably, this scaffolding is going to be a different place because they need that to do all this work. But it is, I can't even tell, I'm sorry, I'm so excited. I can't even tell you how excited I am. And uh, you are, we will figure out some way for you to be able to, besides Sunday morning, to see what they've done. I'm gonna ask George Cordes, our iconographer, to provide an opportunity, perhaps there's, a, there's a, a time slot you can come in and say, you know, we'll sort of have an open house, come in and watch them working. Watch for those, because they're going to be here for a while, so I'll figure that out for you. And then, uh, and then the other thing is, I did mention him ahead of time for him to hold some kind of a workshop, 
and I think probably that may take place during our pre-sanctified liturgies, because we oftentimes have guest speakers there, so I'm going to ask him to do that as well. But thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for your support. It is. Thank you for that. We have actually two birthdays to celebrate. One of them is Carol, one of our longest standing choir members, still standing actually, <laughs> and also Mary Magdalene Welsh. And they both are celebrating their birthdays this weekend, so I think they deserve our well wishes, don't you? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Carol and Mary Magdalene. Happy birthday to you. Have a wonderful day. Let's fill out the paper with your roots. Sign up for a meal for the iconographers, please. Thank you very much.